let's walk through creating an energy bar chart. The first step will always be identifying the components of the system. Remember that we always include the earth. Another rule to always check is to identify if friction is present. Sometimes this will be stated in a problem, other times you need to infer it. For example, if a skateboard is moving horizontally but slowing down, it's likely that friction is present. Let's examine problem 1C in worksheet 3. Pause the video to read the problem and identify the components of the system. Okay, hopefully you identified the cart, the earth, the track, and the spring as the components of the system. Make sure you have written them into your system circle. What's our next step? Yes, identify if friction is present. In this problem, the answer is provided in the reading. Friction is present. Put a star above ETH to remind you that you can have thermal energy storage. What's next? Start with each initial energy storage type and identify if it is present or not. Is kinetic energy present? Why or why not? Since the cart is not moving initially, we can cross off EK. How about gravitational energy? Is there any energy stored in the gravitational field between the Earth and the cart? Since it does not appear that the cart can fall below its initial state, we can say it has no gravitational energy. Cross off EG. Finally, is there any elastic energy present initially? Explain why or why not. Since the spring is part of our system, and it is compressed, there is elastic energy present. Circle EEL. Since we only have elastic energy present initially, go ahead and fill up the EEL column all the way to the top. What's our next step? Yes, move over to the next bar chart. Now, is there any kinetic energy? The three swooshy marks tell us that the card is moving, so we know there is kinetic energy. Circle EK. Is there energy stored in the gravitational field between the cart and the Earth? Yes. The cart has risen, so energy is now stored in the gravitational field between the Earth and the cart. Circle EG. Is there elastic energy stored in the system? Look carefully at the spring. Is it still compressed? Since the spring is no longer compressed against the cart, there is no longer energy stored in the spring. Cross out EEL. You've now checked all the energy storage types, and you're ready to analyze how energy moves into different storage forms. Look at your position A chart. How many units of energy are present? Yes, 5 units. What energy storage forms do you need to divide these 5 units into? Yes, kinetic, gravitational, and thermal. Now, since we don't have equations to calculate the amounts of each storage form, you get to approximate. Go ahead add bars to each of the three columns, just make sure they add up to 5. Pause the video and check back when you are done. Let's look at some possible solutions. Is this solution correct? Yes, 2 units of EK plus 2 units of EG plus 1 unit of thermal energy equals 5 units of energy, and we have some in each of our required columns. Is this solution correct? It's not correct. Can you explain why? Notice that the solution does have 5 units of energy, but it is missing thermal energy. Remember that there was friction, and our star above ETH reminds us of that. One more possible solution. Is this one correct? 
Yes, 2 units of EK plus 2.5 units of EG plus 1 half unit of thermal energy equals 5 units of energy, and we have some in each of our required columns. The final step is to write out a qualitative energy conservation equation. Remember, we're not worried about amounts of energy here, we just want an equation that includes all the energy storage types for both position, as well as representing any energy that was added or taken out of our system. Take a moment to write out all the energy types for position A, remember that the E for energy should be capitalized, and that the types of energy storage are designated with subscript letters. Elastic energy in position A is equal to the kinetic energy plus gravitational energy plus thermal energy in position B.